Hello guys and welcome back to another video with me, Pug Gaming. Today we're going to do something slightly different. It's going to be a recap of the global build off. Now I know a lot of you have asked me to do this so I thought I'd put together a short video with a time lapse and some cinematics at the end. But you ask, if you didn't see it, firstly where were you? <laughs> Secondly, if you didn't see it, this was an event set up by Paradox, Strict Toaster, Flux and Jay. Now the gist of this event was 10 players all building at the same time on the same map but having their own plots to build within. So it's 5v5 and the outcome would be which team had the most aesthetic looking area um, which was obviously hosted on Twitch and the viewers, you guys, got to choose who was worthy of that point. Now, as I say, I didn't want to show the whole of my building um, minute by minute because there was a lot of time where I was um, either struggling or doing some very minor sort of changes which weren't too interesting to watch. So what we've done is I've cut down the video to show the, the sort of key highlights, I guess, of the areas that I've built in quite vast detail and some beautiful cinematics at the end to show the outcome. And firstly, it was a huge honour to be asked to be building alongside such great builders as we see them today. And I must admit, I did feel that this would be a bit of pressure for me. Um, not in terms of the complexity of building, but more so the time restrictions. We had around, I believe it was six to seven hours worth of build time. Um, and as you know me, especially of Monaco, things don't tend to happen very quickly, certainly not within eight hours. Um, I don't tend to play the game for eight hours long anyway, so to play a game for that amount of time was always going to be a struggle for me. Um, usually I take quite a lot of regular breaks, so this was always going to be a big challenge for me. Um, and in terms of the plots, we within a team we decided what plots we were hoping to build upon, and I really wanted to have one of these um, sea front views. Uh, pretty much because of the way I've been working on Monaco, I wanted to use that skill and ability that I've um, picked up on recently to try out something a little bit different. Obviously the area here isn't quite the same as Monaco. Um, firstly it's nice and flat terrain which I was um, uh, I welcomed with open arms to, to use. But not only that but it's a very different sort of map in, in itself. The theme itself is very different and I've always wanted to do a sort of tropical sort of hotel front resort so I got my opportunity to do that. Um, outside of my standard series so that was another really really good thing for me here i was able to venture out into a different build despite not having a series about it so that was really refreshing for me i really enjoyed getting my brain tuned into a different area and building in a very different way i haven't really done a build like this before especially a tropical sort of map um and and whilst on the topic of the map the map was absolutely fantastic if you guys haven't already check out the workshop link below give the game a little load up and see how you get on see how you do within a six to eight hour period of building but anyway let's jump into what i have done so far so you would have seen earlier the first sort of cause of action i guess for me was to put down the roads um, so i wanted to have some sort of a layout first i know it's a very small and narrow plot but i wanted to have some sort of structure to start building around um, the way i build is more like a puzzle i guess um, filling in the blanks once you've got bits down. So that was my sort of attitude to getting this build done. And what we started with here first is a very luxury sort of paradise looking hotel um, using these beautiful buildings here. So the plan here was to create a, a nice looking hotel which eventually I would then use um, the Move It Mod tool to copy and paste another one. Um, the difficulty that I was thinking was how was I gonna detail so much in so little time and the way around that was to basically copy one segment of detailed area and place it elsewhere. So with the Move It Mod tool, this is possible. And a lot of us, well, a lot of the builders in the um, in the competition did the same thing. So we're all thinking the same way of how to achieve quality whilst doing so in a very short amount of time. So that was certainly one thing that helped this situation and getting something very detailed down very early. Now at first I was thinking should I do one very big detailed section and just kind of do a bit more vanilla -y sort of um, detailing um, around it but uh, the way the map looked 
and the way that I started building, I was thinking I can't really just do one section detailed. I kind of have to work on sort of the whole thing and make it all look look the same. Um, I could have done one big sort of focal point area, perhaps in the middle with um, sort of lesser buildings around it. But uh, I decided against that in the end. And I thought I'd just go with what I know best and uh, <laughs> just detail as hard and as aggressively as I possibly can in that space of time. Um, you'll see as the video goes on, there are times when panic does seem to show from what I'm building. Um, but all in all, it did work out very well indeed. And as we build on this section here, you can see that now this first hotel is pretty much near completion. Um, I use some of the decals to make the area look a bit more um, realistic, I guess. The, the use of palm trees obviously is... Uh, very common for me at the moment doing Monaco. So in terms of Monaco, sorry, in terms of palm trees, I certainly know which ones to pick and which ones I don't like to pick. So that was certainly a um, a lifesaver and also a lifesaver. You can see here me putting down these hedges. Now these are network hedges, and not only are they sensational in terms of their looks, but they save so much time. I know you probably think the prop line tool etc um, is also just as good, but when you're building in this hurry it's nice to have the ability to be able to just pull things around as you can do with a network uh, mix or well, the network hedges they certainly work really nicely and you saw there using the move it mod tool i just plop down a second hotel pretty much the same i'll i do change a few bits here and there but it's a, a very easy double copy and paste sort of detailed area so that worked out very nice as well now this section here was going to be the sort of main focal point. I wanted to have a very big hotel in this corner. Lots of levels, lots of sort of different height terrains um, using the um, building modules as well. And I wanted to create a nice little shopping centre behind it. So this is pretty much the hub of this area. So you've got the nice hotels on the seafront, but just behind it you've got the luxury restaurants, luxury hotels, luxury shops as well. So that was kind of my Monaco-esque style coming through there to have that sort of an area um, and it did work out really nicely eventually um, the hardest part was to know how much to fill in and obviously we couldn't really make the areas come to life in terms of having people walk around which obviously is what makes this game look so good when you can do that but in terms of how it does end up it was very well done and I do like these planters as well these grass planters really did help save time and I think as time went by we realised there were certain things we could use that filled the space quickly but still looked nice, still looked detailed and that was what we had to sort of try and get into our brains to start with and um, we was on Discord, our team, Team A and there was a lot of comments along that sort of line and we all were there to help each other out and give each other some advice so that was really cool as well, it was nice to spend time talking to other builders um, obviously I've spoke to some of them before on Discord sort of type in chat but to speak to them it was a real honour as well to sort of chat to the guys as we went along and it was very motivating as well the team spirit was really high. Now there are certain areas I wanted to add into this plot that I had, plot four, and one of the ideas I had was going back to an episode I did probably a year ago today, um, maybe longer, and it was a construction site. And whilst this is perfect for this build because it filled a big space very quickly, you can get some excellent looking building sites done now with the beautiful Beard Monkey props and all these beautiful decals as well on the workshop. Everything really does go together nicely. 
and it is really, really good and easy to now build a very lifelike looking construction site. And like I said, it was something that came into my head and it just fills the space quickly, but it looks nice and it also fits the theme. And when I say fit the theme, what I'm talking about here is you've, as I say, we've already looked at the hotels on the front, seafront. We've got the shopping center as well. And this industry at the back here was gonna be a very office-y industry. So this was replicating the whole of uh, sort of, you know, another office block being built up, telling a little story as things go along. And that's what I love about the game. Whether you're rushed to do so, you naturally build. And even if you don't mean to, you're still creating a story that when someone else looks at your build, they can either pitch their own story or as you tell them the story, it becomes reality, so to speak, within the game. So this construction site was something I read. I actually really enjoyed doing that. As I say, it's not something I've done for a little while now. And building up a little area on the side as well to make it look like a building has been erected was really fun as well. And another way of saving time was added, adding these um, car parks as well, the parking lots, the module ones that are on the workshop now, which make life so much easier. Um, and it fills a big space as well. Like I said, we had a lot of space to fill in terms of the build itself and finding out these little methods to do so. Rather than just using trees, we could have gone back to the old days of filling everything that either doesn't look good or needs a bit of work with trees. We've got a lot more options now, a lot more things we can use. And you'll notice again, I use these hedges a lot in this build. And not only, like I said earlier, because they look nice, but they also just tidy things up. They make things look a little bit cleaner, especially in this office area. I wanted to have a lot of sort of walkways all the way through with some paths and some nice grassy areas where you would imagine people just stop off and have some food, etc. So that was the idea with that. And also it was good to get a bit of practice in for Monaco as well. It's always good to be able to build a lot quicker, um, but still quite some very... The use of the Move It Mod tool to copy and paste was certainly one method that did save a lot of time. And it's something I will be using eventually in Monaco. Um, you'll see shortly I start building on some houses, which I copy and paste as well. So the use of the copy and paste mod certainly will help when it comes to future episodes in Monaco. And it's always good to see how well you deal under pressure. And I think everyone, there wasn't one person in the build of themselves who I would say were unhappy with their builds. Everyone, their quality shined through and everyone delivered the very best that they could do in that space of time. But talking of time, that was one thing that we all didn't really know how we was doing in terms of were we on time? How long have we got left? Can we complete this to the expectations that we want? And it was this point that I decided to be silly and design a modular stand for a small tennis court. So I used the um, staircases here to try and imitate a sort of grandstand on one side. And then I thought to myself, why don't we try and clip some buildings in there? Really make this area pop, make it very unique, very different, rather than just having a tennis court in a field. So I then plopped some buildings actually in side the um, the grandstand itself to sort of act as the um, sort of focal hub of the tennis club itself where you would go sort of have some food get changed and all that sort of stuff so that's one thing i thought i'd add in here and then i thought to myself we can make this a little bit more complex and let's add some additional areas so we then put in a swimming pool and a sort of small um, sort of park area as well so there was a lot of things that we had um, working in this particular area and I really did like this section it was good to do some custom builds I didn't think well I didn't know if it was a sensible thing to do at first especially when this was sort of halfway through the event and as you can see from the map at the moment there is still a lot of green space around um, which did eventually cause some panic probably shortly after I finished doing this little tennis court play um, club here that's when people started realizing we didn't have a lot of time left and then it was sort of all guns to the panics and uh, let's try and fill as much as we can, as quickly as we can, but still keep things detailed. So it certainly was a challenge. And I know I've said that a few times already in this video, but it really was. And I really do say to you guys to give it a go because it is really fun, under pressure building, trying to do what you're used to doing, being pushed outside your comfort zone. It really is enjoyable to do. 
But now going back to the build, this was pretty much the time where I was thinking, okay, we need to start detailing some of these areas. So I've already got some segments done, I guess, in terms of what I had already built. But it was more of a case of now going back and thinking, okay, we've got some green space here. Let's fill this in before we detail the rest. So you'll see here now, I placed down a lot of these um, buildings and houses to try and just fill the space so that we could then at least cover all of the area that we can see as grass and then we can detail around it. And I'm still today surprised that I actually managed to complete it <laughs> to a standard um, that I was happy with. You know, being rushed for time is always gonna make you feel like you could have done better. But in terms of the competition, I think we all did really well. And as you see now, placing down some of the palm trees and other other bits and bobs really did um, help you get there in the end. And I think this is pretty much the last sort of half an hour time lapse now. Um, and I've got some cinematics to show at the end as well. So I'm gonna sign off here and thank you all for watching if you came along to the stream as well we all do thank you dearly for getting involved and commenting and asking the questions it's really fun to do a, a little interview as well with the guys um, and I hope that gave you some information about all of the people in the stream that maybe you wanted to find out more about and yeah talking to streaming that's something I'm going to carry on doing a bit more um, I'm currently doing quite a bit on Twitch and I've been doing some on YouTube as well. I normally do recording, oh sorry, I normally stream to both platforms um, because it's easier and I know I've got people following me on both now. But it's something that I'm going to carry on doing and I'll probably will start doing some Monaco building on live stream as well. So make sure you follow my Twitch account. It's um, in the bottom of the description below, but it's um, podgaming underscore YT. So check that out as well. I'm going to leave you with these last moments of panic detailing and stick around for the cinematics and I'll catch you again in the next video. Thanks for watching guys and all the best.